Amen. Come on and give God a hand, clap of praise. Look to your neighbor, say, neighbor, this is the ultimate moment and the ultimate time for the ultimate season to me receive the ultimate blessing because I have the ultimate life. Look to your neighbor, say, ultimate life. Ultimate life. Ultimate life. I have. We have. You have. The ultimate life. You live for God. Walk with God. Talk with God. Act like God. You must have. The ultimate life. All right, give, come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now for your word today, God. We ask that you move in a mighty way. God, show us how we can strive to have the ultimate life. Yes, we were just prophesying to ourselves. We were prophesying to our neighbors. We were prophesying to our marriages. We were prophesying to our bodies that we have the ultimate. But God, make it plain and show us how we are to receive the full benefits from it. Next week, God, you'll talk to us about the ultimate gift. This week, we want to get a comprehension of the ultimate life. So God, we thank you in advance for the ultimate blessing of being your children. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go, go with me to the book of John, the book of John, chapter one, uh, the book of John, chapter one. We're going to start there, but I want to uh, I, I, I really want us to focus in on uh, the word ultimate just for a moment. As you turn into the book of John, you turn into the book of John, chapter one, uh, you'll get an understanding of where God wants us to be. So we're going to spend some time there. But I want you to uh, get a great understanding of the word ultimate. Say ultimate. Sometimes we uh, we look at it and, and uh, we know the word ultimatum. That means you uh, this is the this is your last choice. Say ultimatum. Sometimes people get to a point where they have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and the ultimatum is live for Jesus or die. That's the ultimatum. In that case, there is no ultimatum. The only choice you have is what to live for Jesus. Then there's the penultimate. The word penultimate is the one, uh, uh, the second to last. The word penultimate is the one before the last. The word penultimate is the one that comes before uh, 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 the ultimate. Pen, P-E-N, ultimate, penultimate. Uh, uh, so there is uh, layers of, of the word ultimate that we have to fully understand and fully comprehend before we can understand the exact uh, meaning and definition of the word ultimate. The word ultimate uh, is more than just the last. Say it's more than just the last. Uh, uh, the word ultimate could mean uh, the best. The, ex the extremely the best. The word ultimate can mean uh, um, uh, premier, the, 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 the highest level. The word ultimate can be, uh, um, it can mean the last. All right? But sometimes we miss it when the word ultimate is just what it says. The ultimate, higher than everything else. Sometimes we have to remember that we are connected to, we are related to, we are sons of or daughters of the person that's higher than everything else. Uh, uh, and, and when we recognize that you don't have to stress over things, you don't have to debate over things because you, w when you're connected to greatness, you don't have to be great at the moment. You just have to tap into your connection. You have to tap into your ulti ul the, the ultimate 
person that you're connected to, and that's Jesus. You actually have three ways to be connected to that ultimate system. That ultimate system is you're connected to God the Father. The ultimate system says you're connected to uh, Jesus the Son. The ultimate system says you're connected to the Holy Spirit, three in one. You're the only being on earth that's connected three ways. I'm going to help you today. There are people. There are people up and around that uh, that uh, may be uh, uh, connected to something. They they could be connected to uh, a, a fraternity. They could be connected to uh, 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 what they call uh, the, those orders. They could be connected even as masons, but they only have a one way connection. We have a, a quadrilateral connection to our ultimate connection. Now y'all, I done lost y'all. Quadrilateral. Right? That's because it's three plus us is four. We are in there. Without us, let me help y'all out today. I'm gonna give you a, a, a new thing that you might not have learned. Without us, body of Christ on earth, nothing that Jesus wants to get done can get done without you doing it. If it's earthbound, we are his earth agents of God to get them done. So without you pushing the button, it put, the button can't get pushed. Without you making a move, the move, the move can't get moved. What I'm saying is when you're connected to the ultimate, you become part of the ultimate experience. The ultimate experience is the best experience. You are connected to it. Say, I'm, I'm one. I've been on that ride. I've been on that experience. I've been there and, and I, it feels good. I remember when I was little and I, uh, uh, I, I was about six years old, maybe five years old. And I was horrified to get on Space Mountain. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, could, I can recount the tears coming down my face as I was scared, shivering, never wanting to get on that attraction. And, and all I saw was a roller. They said, man, this roller coaster was going in the dark and it was going up and down. And I was, I was horrified. But my daddy, God love him. He, him, him, him and my mother were, they, they figured they done paid for these tickets. Come on now, y'all know what I'm talking about. We going on everything that's in this place, including Space Mountain. How many people feel like that? You, you've paid for an experience. You want every bit of that experience. Uh, sometimes we don't recognize that Jesus paid for you to have the best experience that you can ever have. But why are you leaving things that God left you on the table because you didn't want to do it? You might have a little fear of getting closer to God. He paid the price for you to have the best experience, the ultimate experience on earth. But we leave stuff on the table. There's blessings that we left right next door to us because we are fearful to go get it. So, but I was, I was balling. I remember. No, not, not money balling. I was balling for tears. Like the, if you ever look at the cartoons with a guy with a big mouth wide open and, it, and tears coming out of their eyes, that was me. I was balling. And my mother was all, she was hunky dory. My dad, of course, you know, he didn't care. He was enjoying himself, right? He's like, boy, you getting on this ride. I was like, ah, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, don't make me go. And so uh, we in the line. I'm still, I'm shivering. I'm shivering. I'm, I'm seeing these people get off the ride and they scared. You know how it is. They, they, their hair was all nice when they got on. And when they got off, their hair's all windblown. And, and, and man, they look like they've been through a whirlwind. And I'm sitting ready to get on this ride. I'm like, oh, no. So I take the leap of faith. And I ain't get to my scripture yet, but I'm going somewhere. Sometimes when you want the ultimate experience with God, you got to take a leap of faith. Fear don't transfer, transformed from fear to if I don't get on this ride, I'm complete embarrassment. And I take the leap of faith and I go on the attraction. 
I get all, I'm enjoying. Don't you know when I got on the attraction, it wasn't scary at all? Sometimes when you want the ultimate experience, when you take that big step, when you're in the middle of it, it's not scary at all. So I get, a, I get off the ride. Now, here's the dichotomy of experience. I get off the ride, and I had the ultimate experience. My father, he might have had the ultimate experience. My mother was crying when she got off. She might not have been uh, had the fear when she got on. She was willing to take the chance of the ultimate experience. But when she got off, I guarantee you, she didn't like what she was getting. Sometimes, this is my teaching to you, and it's not reference to my, daughter, my mother. Sometimes, when you get so close with God, you might not like what God reveals to you in the process. So part of the ultimate experience may transform you and change you, and you might not immediately like it. But she, she still went on the ride. And subsequently, she's been on the ride again without fear. What I'm saying to you is, so I want the ultimate experience. Going to the book of John, the book of John, chapter one, and we're going to uh, and we're going to read. I, I, I promise not to be before you long. I'm not going to give you my third, first and second close. And I just promise you that what you're going to find is you're going to enjoy the ultimate life. So I got the ultimate life. And you're going to see the connection that you have the authority to walk into. You have the right to get into and you shall be it, uh, having the ultimate experience, the ultimate life. See, I have it. Uh, let me help you out. Uh, there's three things that you're going to learn today that you'll have to understand. We already know that what I just gave you was a preamble to my message. Uh, uh, what you're going to learn today is that you uh, have uh, the ultimate friend. The ultimate friend is Jesus Christ. I'm going to learn. I have the ultimate friend. I also have the ultimate dad. Uh, say, I have the ultimate dad. And, and he's a good dude, ain't he? Uh, uh, in Jesus' name. Say, say, he's a good dude. He took good, good, he takes good care of me. So if you have the ultimate friend and the ultimate and the ultimate father, right, and, uh, and say, uh, I also have the I have the ultimate sacrifice. So three things you're going to learn today and we're going to we're not going to be before you long, but we want you to learn them so you can get a full picture of what God is doing. Sometimes you have to understand that what you've been through is only your stepping stone uh, to your breakthrough. Look to your neighbor and say, that's my stepping stone. So the challenges I might be fighting are preparing me for the ultimate life. Let me just help you out. We're going to keep this theme park uh, uh, analogy going just for a little bit longer. Uh, how about you know that some of the best rides are the furthest away? It's a blessing that I work for a theme, uh, a company that does a themed entertainment. We don't like to call them theme parks, so to, so to speak, but they're themed entertainment. Uh, 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 and uh, what we do is we put strategically place some of the best attractions deeper into the park so that you can go through the fuller experience when you get there. Mm, I've been talking to y'all today. Right? Uh, I'm preaching better than y'all saying something, but, but, here, but here it goes. What, what, it, what I'm saying to you is the reason why you have to walk so far to get to the best attraction is because we want you to experience all the little shows and attractions on the way. What I'm saying to you is the, the reason why you're, you're walking so hard and so deep and have to go th so far to get into your deep experience with God is because God wants you to experience the little bumps, little bruises, little attractions, little shows along the way. If you it it it, it take to, it may take you 20 30 years to get perfected what God wants you to have perfected but some of that thing is some of that stuff you have to go through. People look at our, look at me and Prophet's marriage and say, "Man, they got the perfect marriage. They it, it is sweet and hunky dory. They don't they don't argue, they don't yell, they don't have any 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 uh any issues at all." But baby, let me help y'all out. It took us a couple of uh, 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 
of bad attractions to get there. It wasn't always perfect. It wasn't always right. But let me just tell you, we, we have a great marriage, not a good marriage. A good marriage is okay. Uh, we have a great marriage. Why? Because it takes work, baby. And you have to fight through some of the issues that you have to fight through. I'm the one who makes the most mistakes. She has to accept me for some of the mistakes I done made. And, and, and that's okay. Because uh, when I make these bumps, uh, she, God bumps me over the head, knocks me, knocks my sense into me, and I recognize, man, I should have, I shouldn't have went on that ride. I should have left that ride alone and went somewhere else. The, 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 there's an attraction. I, I, I pick, I'm picking on Walt Disney World because I happen to know it well, right? There's an attraction at Walt Disney World called Mickey's Phil or Magic. It's a four-dimensional sit-down theater where you watch a movie, but uh, four dimensions is three dimensions plus smell or or water or something like that, right? Uh, I think some of you might have been on the attraction with me, uh, but uh, you're actually on the attraction. You're on the show, and you go through different scenes. Uh, in different movies, in different lives. Amen? I'm going somewhere. Y'all, y'all, y'all going to get there. I promise you. So when you're watching this, you go, uh, you go through The Lion King. You go through Aladdin. You go through Little Mermaid. All these wonderful Disney classics. Say Disney classics. And you, uh, and, and you know, the, the thing about Disney classics is good always defeats evil. Let me help y'all out today. Uh, say good always defeats evil when your spirit tell you that you want to yell back sometimes you have to recognize good always defeats evil when 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 your spouse or your significant other or your friend may argue at you and yell at you and you want to yell back just remember that good always defeats evil even when you know you is absolutely in the right and you just want to get your get back you know what i'm talking about you have to recognize that good always defeats evil. I'm teaching y'all today. As you grow in your relationships, as you grow in even situations where your relationship may be with a brother and sister or a mother and a father, and you want to just, you know what I'm talking about. You want to just get back, you'll get back, and, and you don't, you, no matter what you've been going through, you is all in the right, and you, you've been doing everything. Sometimes you have to hold your tongue because good will always defeat Y'all, y'all talking to me today. See, you'll get to understand. What I'm saying to you is that, so we, you go on this attraction, and in the midst of the attraction, uh, uh, Donald Duck steals Mickey's hat. Donald's always wanting to be Mickey. The attraction is Mickey's fill of magic, but it's Donald's experience through Mickey's show that's why it's called that. Now, Donald steals his hat. He goes through every one of these movies. When he goes to, uh, he goes to uh, Beauty and the Beast, they throw a pie at him. And they throw a pie at the crowd. We get to smell the pie, right? Uh, he gets wet in uh, Little Mermaid. He dumps in the water, gets wet in Little Mermaid. Guess what we do? We get wet. Sometimes when you're connected to somebody else, you might have to go through what they're going through. It, I, I'm going I'm to I'm do this two ways. When you marry, <laughs> when you marry, say when you marry, you gotta, sometimes you got to go through what they're going through. Sometimes we say when you got children, sometimes you have to go through what they're going through. And I'm going to help you. This is the third connection. Amen. Last connection. Last connection. When you're connected to God, you have to go through what he went through. If Jesus was whipped, Jesus was beaten, 
Jesus was scourged. Jesus was, uh, was crucified. If Jesus went all through that, don't you think there's a point in the season and the time where in your life where it may feel like you've been scourged, where it may feel like you've been crucified, when you may feel like you've been uh, beaten, when you feel like you've been spit on, when you feel like you got pain in your body, when it feel like you got hurt in your heart, when the people that were closest to you betrayed you. Don't you know what God is saying to you? If Jesus went through it and you're connected to Jesus, you in order to get the ultimate life, you have to have the ultimate experience. You have to go through what he get, went through so that you know that what you where he's going you're going we 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 don't recognize that you want to do everything you want to be with jesus he, you know those people that went with israel they love that they walk where jesus walk but they didn't they might not they might have walked where he walked but they might not have walked in his shoes baby what i'm saying is there's a big difference of walking in touching the land of Israel, but also being beaten where he was beaten at. How about carrying the cross down to Via Della Rosa? We might have walked that experience, but we never felt that experience. What I'm saying to you is there's some things that we have to get to, to know and really experience to truly have the ultimate life. Oh, I feel like preaching. I, had, I know I haven't got to my scripture yet, but I just feel like preaching. Can I go ahead and do that? Sometimes we have to understand that, yes, we want to be a son of God. We want to be in his kingdom, but we have to understand to get in and, and to be a part of the family, you got to go through some stuff. I can imagine what it meant to be. King David's son. You can imagine that there was as many as King David's sons, there had to be a thousand attempts on their lives. I can imagine. I couldn't imagine him being Jesus, being Jesus' brother right there as he walked i mean i know we are his sons and we know we're we're he's our big brother now but you imagine 2000 and something years ago walking with jesus eating dinner with him i would love to have been there but i also couldn't imagine doing it and knowing the the, the challenges that was to walk in that time what well, they said jesus who's the remember they, they asked jesus who was the best Who's your favorite? <laughs> and, and, and Jesus' answer was, if you want me, if you want this, you got to drink this cup with me. All my deacons are my favorites. Especially the mom, even the mama's boys. <laughs> But you can imagine walking with God. We got it. We take it for granted that we have some of the blessings of the ultimate life we already have. Jesus walked the whole country. Might have got on a horse every now and then. On a mule. A journey we took two hours when we were there. Take them 11, 12 days. We take that for granted. A brother that was in, in Dale's current circumstance, he had to be carried everywhere. Or he didn't go anywhere. Now he got a chariot called a vehicle. People in Dale's current circumstance, they wouldn't have been married. He got married. He's living the ultimate experience and I might not even know it. Because he's, we get so frustrated, we get so, we get so stymied by the little things that are standing before us, we miss the big picture. That's one thing about Walt Disney World. They got the, de the small attention to details on the little things so that you never miss the big moments. Every, 
when's the fireworks? Fireworks that you know about. Everybody let you know. Don't miss the fireworks. Every, when you're leaving out the place, they say, don't leave yet. The fireworks going. Why? Because they don't want you to miss the big show. Imagine you leave your relationship with God early. You might miss the big show. You right there on the precipice of your financial breakthrough. You right there on the precipice of your marriage. You right there on the precipice of your, and, and you get frustrated because you haven't seen the manifestation of God yet happen in your life and you walk out on him. Hypocrite said you need to wait and God's going to show up. Isaiah said, God, God, if God spoke a word to you, it's never going to return to you void. But yet we act like we put God on a, uh, on a time clock that, hey, I, I, punched it, I punched in at eight. I'm, I'm punching out on five, God. You got to do it. John 1, you got it? Okay, good. Well, I, I promised you I was going to preach something. Let me just at least preach something. Y'all probably saying, man, this dude done preached three messages already. <clears throat> in the beginning, say in the beginning, was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Sometimes you have a challenge that um, you, you are a faction of the light. Say, I'm a faction of the light. Uh, let me just help you out. Every church should be a faction of the light. Right? So when churches get together, the light gets what? Greater. Right? But sometimes as a faction of the light, you go into darkness and darkness will not comprehend you. There are places that you go that because of your light, they will not understand you. There's some family and friends, them pookie them, they, you know what I'm talking about. Don't, 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 uh, 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 Robert and John that you might love and you might uh, enjoy being around, but they just don't understand you. Right? It could be a son, it could be a neighbor, it could be a cousin, it could be somebody that you related to. It could be uh, 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 as much even as a parent. Just because they birthed you don't mean they, they, they understand the God you serve. Or how deep and convicted you are to that God. There was a ride, an attraction at Walt Disney World. There was a, it was an extra extraterrestrial attraction. The attraction was so scary. You would get on it, and, and this big ET type creature would jump out on you, and it, then the, the place would go dark, complete dark. I think you might remember this ride. We took remember we took Pooh on it when the first came, when the first. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, so we took Pooh on it. Now he's 30 something years old, this guy. So now this is how long ago it was. The attraction was so scary that the, 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 the alien would break out of his, ca his containment cell, run around the building in the complete dark, breathe on you, spit on you, uh, 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 he'll tickle your ear. I mean, it, and it was just in complete dark. And the the, and you were stuck in a harness, so you couldn't get out. You were, once you got on the attraction, you were on the attraction. You weren't going nowhere. And, and, when, and when that alien licked on your neck, that was it. We had... We probably had about 30% of the people that went on that attraction get off the attraction crying and scaring, never, claiming never to get on, never to come back to Disney World or never get on that attraction again. 
Now, of course, that feeling of fear and everything subsided as they went through the park. But after after three or four or five years of that attraction being, yes, the most scariest attraction in the state of Florida, but yes, the lowest rated of the company, we got rid of it. Sometimes, in order to get the ultimate experience right, you have to take some daring chances. You might even fail a few times. You might even bump your, bump your head, bump your toes, bump your knees, scuff up your knees. You might even burn your skin every now and then. But I promise you, if you take a few chances and be even in the midst of having to be a light in amongst darkness on your workplace, you might have to stand up for God. They may tell somebody that they can't, they may tell you that you can't play your, uh, your radio on the KPRT or something. They may tell you that you can't listen to gospel music. They may tell you that you can't have your Bible out. Sometimes you might have to stand strong. And say, if they can read their comic books, I surely could read my Bible. If they can, if, if they could cuss at me, I could surely uh, uh, speak in tongues. If they, if, if they can go and smoke, I could surely go in my break and, and read the Bible. I know you can't tell me that. So, so you have. Sometimes we have to stand up. Sometimes that may cost us a job or two or a promotion or, 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 or uh, upgrade or something like that. But guess what? When you stand up for God, he stand up for you. So they got rid of that attraction. And it's now the kinder, gentler stitch attraction. I remember when... <laughs> When uh, our cousin Robert got on the on the attraction, he told me he'll never get he'll never go with me to Disney World again. He's not going on that attraction again. That was proof positive that the the marketing of that attraction was if you the, the, if you are pregnant or you have uh, heart problems, this is not the attraction for you. <laughs> Let me just help you out. If you're getting on a ride that tells you that ahead of time, if you are uh, uh, if you have uh, if you're pregnant, have a heart condition, or uh, scared of dark places, and, and that's a sign for you not to get on that ride. Sometimes during the ultimate experience, the ultimate life, we see a lot of signs from the ghost, from the Holy Ghost. But we still press on through. When it's when we want to do something. They may tell you that this is this this is not the season for you to go get a car. This is the season for you to wait just a bit longer. And, and, and God will tell you, God will tell you that yes, you need to wait about six months. But he'll and you'll have that weight in your spirit, but then you go right to the dealer and go try and get one anyway. You know what I'm talking about. You may, you may, uh, God may say, yeah, go, go to the dealer right now. And, and this is the car you're supposed to get. And when you get there, you go and choose another car and wonder why you struggle, why you don't like it. How many people, how many people said, man, this, this came from the Lord. And then they, they sitting on, uh, foreclosure. If it came from the, the, the Lord, the Lord going to supply your financial needs for it. Now, I know times get hard and, and things happen. People get laid off and situations like that. But if you in the same economical status and you take one of them crazy loans, that uh, jumbo loans that raised after the first year, you went from a thousand dollar mortgage to a five thousand dollar mortgage. Shame on you to blame it on God. If you could afford the five thousand or more, hey, you you straight, you know. But I'm saying, shame on you if you blame it on God. Amen. 
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness to the light and that all the men through him might believe. He was not the light, but he was sent to bear witness of the light. That means there's somebody going to be a forerunner. Say there's a forerunner. Some of y'all in this place are to be forerunners. Some of y'all need to go to Disney World to test it out for your family. Some of y'all need to go. Uh, uh, let me just help y'all. Uh, going to Worlds of Fun uh, once, a month, once a year is not the same as going to Walt Disney World. That's not being a forerunner. I, I try to tell people every time. I love uh, the Holy Land experience in Orlando. That is not Israel. It is not the Holy Land. If you're on a low budget, you can only get to Florida. You can't get across the pond. Okay. But let me help you out. It is not the same. Some of y'all were meant to be forerunners for your family. Some of y'all are doing things here at Glory Bible Fellowship International Church. God's taking you higher places, doing you're doing higher things that you were called to be a forerunner. Say, I'm a forerunner. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm a forerunner. I'm a forerunner for the rest of my family. I'm leading my family out of hell. Into the marvelous light. It's me. They, they may not see it yet. They may not even know I'm doing it for them. But God chose me to do it. So I'm doing it. Let me just help you out. Sometimes we have to understand that you might not, you might not have even chosen it. But God put you here to do it. Say, I'm here. I'm here. Generations behind me, generations ahead of me are going to be saved because of me. I'm the forerunner for my family. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm the forerunner. 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 Y'all young people like, I don't want to be the forerunner. <laughs> that was my mama and them. But as many as received him, this is the way I wanted to stop. He, he came unto his own and his own received them not. But as many received him, to them gave him power to become sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Don't you know you have the power to become God, a son of God? Say, I have the power. Uh, uh, there's a songwriter, Snap, right? Snap wrote the song, I got the power. Uh, oh, he man. Well, you watch too many cartoons, son. Uh, <laughs> he brought out He Man. I hadn't seen a He Man cartoon in probably 20 years. He talked about He, he Man. But uh, I, know the, I know the cartoon. I got the power. Yes, I got it. <laughs> Brother Charles. Dreams and visions, baby. Dreams and visions. You prophesying, you're going to be He Man. I get it. Just don't come to church dressed in one of them long clothes or something. <laughs> <laughs> Could you just give me a second just to laugh at myself, please? <laughs> I can't get the picture out of my head, brother. I can't. I can't. <laughs> With a sword and everything. <laughs> Everybody's looking at you way different than they did just 10 minutes ago. <laughs> He man had the straps and this a little piece of lawn cloth. Can you imagine Brother Charles in with straps? <laughs> but he beca- he was carrying his sword though. <laughs> man. Everybody looking at you now. He's the black he man. You notice when we watch cartoons, we never had an issue with color? You notice that? We, yeah, they were purple. There was the Wonder Twins. Uh, Wonder Twin powers activate. Uh, so I, I, listen, I, I'm there with you, right? Uh, uh, we never have an issue with color. Come to church on Sunday, we have an issue with color. Not here, but I'm saying other churches, right? Uh, you go to work, they have an issue with color. Go to school, have an issue with color. Where do we learn that? Uh, 
His alter ego was what? Prince Adam? Hold on, hold on. The most powerful man in the universe. He, man. Go ahead, Brother Charles. See, you, you can probably feel good now. But as many as received to him gave the power to become sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. Don't you know that you're a son? Say, I'm a son. So that means I have, if I'm the son of God, I have the ultimate dad. Say, I have the ultimate dad. When you, when you live with, when you're the son of God, you get the ultimate benefits of being his, his child. One thing we have to understand is we have the right to, 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 to look at that. I, I had them. Oh my God. Yes. Ultimate, ultimate, ultimate. Say ultimate. So I have the ultimate dad. There's a songwriter, uh, Rick Pino said, uh, we have the best dad in the whole world, right? We do. Say we do. When you're connected to greatness, you don't have to worry about what's going to happen next. Greatness got your back. When you happen to, when you, when you're connected to awesome, you don't have to worry about what's happening next. Awesome got your back. <laughs> when you, when you, when, <laughs> when you're connected to everlasting, you don't have to worry about what's going to happen next. Everlasting got your back. <laughs> when you're connected to, uh, omnipresent, you don't have to worry what's going to happen next because omnipresent got your back. <laughs> you don't, uh, when you're connected to omniscient, you don't have to worry about what's going to happen next because omniscient got your back. <laughs> uh, 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 when you, when you're connected to something that can do signs and wonders and supernatural miracles, you don't have to worry about what's going to happen next. He'll heal your heart. He'll heal your leg. Because signs and windows happens, uh, signs and wonders happens next. What I'm saying to you is you have the authority already because you're his son. Say, I'm his son. And he treats us like we're all his firstborn. Now we get the largest portion of the blessing. I get the largest portion, then y'all get the straps. But no, uh, uh, we all get the largest portion of his blessing. John 3, 16, he was the ultimate sacrifice, right? We know that. So when you get the ultimate gift, sometimes it was the ultimate sacrifice. That's an awesome thing that your daddy gave you the ultimate gift, but it also was the ultimate sacrifice. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved what god is it, 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 god is such a loving god that he sent his only begotten son not to just to be related to you but to 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 die for you to take your place uh, in, in, in on earth so that you could be blessed that is the best replacement theology you can ever have god sent his son to take all the sins and he put it on him so i could be sin free that's replacement theology that I could get with. Proverbs 18. And we're going to close. Y'all enjoy this? Y'all enjoy Brother Charles in his He-Man outfit? The prophets keep trying to get me in the loincloth. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Because <laughs> I'm Prince Adam and I'm supposed to turn into he being The most powerful man in the world. You see that man? That man was cut. I'm not there yet. I'm getting there. But I'm, uh, uh, I'm not there yet. <laughs> we got work to do, man, if we want to get like he man. How many people saw Hercules, uh, the one with the rock? Uh, you saw the Hercules with the one with the rock? That dude was cut. We gonna get there. Say, we gonna get there. We gonna get rid of the stomachs and we gonna be cut. Say, we gonna get there. Yeah, they look, look at that. He was cut. He was rippled. Say, a man, 18 and 24, you got it? Well, let's start at 22nd just because I like to read this one. 18 and 22, but we're going to read 22 through 24. 18, 22 says, who's Proverbs? 
Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtain favor of the Lord. Say, say I'm getting my good thing. Uh, you say, you, uh, if you're a woman, say, I'm the good thing. And, and I'm the favor. I just got the good thing and the favor. Amen. I got to both say, say, say if, you're the, if you're the man, say, I'm getting my good thing. And I'm getting my favor. And I'm... Uh, Hey, hey, hey. He heard the Roman scripture. He's good. 23 says, the poor uses entreaties, but the richest answers roughly. And look, 24. Say 24. And we're going to close. Say, a man that have a friend must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. How many people know that Jesus is that friend? Holy Spirit is that friend that stick, stick is closer than a brother. Even a brother every now and then a, will cut you. But the Holy Spirit and Jesus will not. Because you are part of the ultimate experience. The ultimate life. Stand to your feet. songwriter said I am a friend of God I am a friend of God he calls me friend some of you everybody up everybody up everybody up close your eyes With all eyes closed, everybody standing, head bowed. I'm asking somebody who might not have a friend like God. You might not have a relationship with Jesus. I'm wondering where, how you missed out on such a great friendship, such a great ultimate experience, ultimate life. Next week, the ultimate gift. Some of you might wonder, how did I get like this? How did I go so far astray that I, I don't even know who God is? I wonder why I can't make friends. And the reason why is because I don't even have a relationship to know what love and what friendship really is. Because I don't even know God. A friend like God would send his only begotten son on the earth and die for us. So that we'll have life. And not only have life, but have it more abundantly. Do you know a friend like that? Is there somebody that you'd be willing to die for? So much so? How many people know somebody that they'll die for? They're willing to die for. Right? Now, how many people was willing to die for somebody that don't know them. That's the type of love that Jesus had for us. We didn't even know Jesus died for us, but he did. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, with all eyes bowed, eyes closed, head bowed. Raise your hand. It's okay. Nobody's going to condemn anybody. If you know your relationship with Jesus is not where it needs to be. You, you've been going through the motions. You might come to church every Sunday and Wednesday. But in reality, you need a connection with God for real some of, some of you okay yes I, I know who God is yes I believe he's my Lord and Savior but I've kind of fell away for a while I've lost my connection I've undone my connection by my actions by my attitudes by my challenges 
that's you, it's okay for you to raise your hand. I see your hands. I see one. I see two. I see three. I see four. I see them. All hands down. Everybody, repeat after me. Say in Jesus' name, forgive me a sinner. Come into my heart, God. I know you died on the cross for me. I know you died so that I may have everlasting life. Some of the benefits of your ultimate experience, your ultimate life, I've taken for granted. I might not have everything, but thank God I'm breathing. Thank God I can talk. Thank God I can move. Thank God that I am. And since I am, and you made me, I thank God for you. Jesus, forgive me for taking you for granted not recognizing the many blessings that I have but now realizing that I'm ingrained in your ultimate experience I am connected to you by three ways the Father the Son the Holy Spirit oh Jesus I am now rededicating my life to you walking after you not fighting through the bad ways taking them on knowing that my good ways are on the horizon God I bless you I thank you and now forgive me for not doing all that you've called me to do and I'm going to walk in your in your statutes and I'm going to walk in your ways. I'm going to look like you. I'm going to act like you. I'm going to be like you. In Jesus' name. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Now that we are all in right standing with God, I called Pastor Adam. You can keep playing. Just play lowly on Saturday and the Lord just brought this back to me and I passed and you come stand here I said Pastor Adam because he was somewhere else and I said I had a vision and it was the two of us and our backs were to each other and was sitting on top of this sign that said in big letters the good life and so the father reminded and brought that back to me it took me over to the text on Ephesians 2 in the Amplified Version. And this is the word of the Lord. I want you to, if you have a Bible or if you can, we can put it on the screen, look at it. Part of what the Father was saying is that when the word of God goes forth, that we receive it. And so this ultimate life is a good life and it's a sweet life. The word of God says that the blessings of the Lord make of you rich and it addeth no sorrow. Do you, do you understand that, people? That the blessings of the Lord make of you rich and it addeth no sorrow. So we're to have an ultimate life, which is eternal life. Everyone in this room just stated that they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Which means that you have eternal life. Which means that you, as you are here on earth, you should have, you should live an ultimate, you have ultimate life. But you should live a good life, which is return, is a sweet life. 
Do you believe that on today? Do you receive that on today? And throughout this life, as Pastor Adam come back and stand before us as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, he has given you the ultimate gift. God has given us already the ultimate gift was his son, Jesus Christ. That's what you received on today. But while you're here on earth, as pastor stated, nothing is going to get done except it comes to us, the sons of God. And it says, so we are God's own handiwork. Look at yourself. Say, I am God's own handiwork. His workmanship created in Christ Jesus. That means you was born anew. You said that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Regardless of what you've done in the past, he, you said that you've been born anew. That we may do those good works. Say good works. And remember I said God says he'll hold no good thing away from you. He wants you to have the right mate. That's a good work. Which God predestined. He predestined. It says he planned beforehand. The child that Danielle carries in her belly was planned beforehand. And ancient Jewish teaching says that when a child comes into a world, God says, go into the earth and make it better. Change the world. You were sent here to change the world. To make the world a better place by you showing forth the love of God and the power of God. Plan beforehand for us taking path which he prepared ahead of time. You was thought about before you was even thought about in the mind of God. That we should walk in them living the good life to live in the good life. We're meant to live. Living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. He prearranged and made ready for us to live. You're supposed to live the good life. You're supposed to have a sweet life. And I decree today that anything and everything that is not Prospering for you to have the sweet life that you get rid of it on today. Come on, everybody stand to their feet. And you confess out your mouth, I will have the ultimate life because I have eternal life. I will live a good life because I have a sweet life. In Jesus' name. And anything that stands in my way or stops me from experiencing the ultimate life to give me a sweet life, I ask you, Lord, to deal with it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. What I want us to do, you can come down, Pastor Adam and I. We're just going to uh, lay hands on you, decreeing the sweet life. And some of you can put that song on as we do this. You just come down this line up in the aisle, and both Pastor Adam and I are going to do this. Amen. So store up the anointing in your Murphy. Come on.
close other than the sound booth and the camera let's everybody come forward grab somebody's hand and I want you to prophesy grab hands everybody there should be a connection other than those that are in the sound booth I hope, preferably, that didn't make it to the microphone. But it is true. (laughs) (laughs) Say, neighbor, you're a part of the ultimate experience. God is part of your ultimate life. life. You are part of his ultimate life. life. And I thank God for you. you. You're part of my ultimate experience. experience. My relationship with God God is stronger stronger because you're in my life. life. I thank God for that. that. Now, Now, as we leave here, That doesn't stop me loving God or me loving you. I thank you and I'll speak this blessing over you. May the Lord bless thee. May the Lord keep thee. May the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you my neighbor peace. Nothing broken. Nothing, broken. Nothing, missing. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. Nothing lacking. All, whole. All whole. All complete. All complete. I, speak I speak it over your life. Shalom. Shalom. And may God put his name on you and then bless you again in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Show somebody you love them. <laughs>